we were coming down Hopewell Hill. Fast. My brother tried to pass three cars in the lane that barely had enough room to pass one. We dropped off the side of the road in the next curve. The last thing I remember was him putting his arm across my chest to protect me from what was about to happen. When I came to, he was screaming, Katie, wake up. Please don't be dead. You have to wake up. Please. Can you hear me? I was laying on the ground on a stranger's legs, covered with a blue jean jacket. I looked at my distorted hands. My left pinky was pressed against the side of my wrist. My right fingers folded backwards. They were covered in blood. My forehead was gashed open, and I could feel the breeze going through my head. I started to panic, but then my brother kept telling me to calm down. Help was on the way. You're gonna be okay. I couldn't do anything for myself. My mom was my hands for the next eight weeks. She was also my backbone during the recovery. Sometimes I'd get so angry with her for no reason, but she was patient and kind. I knew I was lucky to be alive and that I'd had a good life and should be grateful. But when I looked in the mirror or at the first selfies we took after the accident, I cried. The scars on my head were ugly and I worried that I'd never be pretty again, never have a boyfriend. I wouldn't be able to do the things that others could do things I wanted to do because of my hands. I felt depressed and then guilty for feeling depressed. I wanted to stay home, avoid people. I felt like my world was ending. My mom told me, Katie, the people you want to be around don't really care what you look like, how you talk, or if you have scars. They mostly care about who you are and you're just fine. She's never lied to me before, so I believed her. And actually, being depressed was more draining than trying to move on. I looked in the mirror and saw me, and I decided I liked what I saw. <laughs>